What it means to receive a signal is to be less uncertain than you were before. And so another way to think of measuring or quantifying a signal is in that change in uncertainty. Using Shannon's mathematics to quantify signals is common in the world of complexity science. It's rather less familiar to historians. I love maths. I love its precision. I love its beauty. I absolutely love its certainty. And that Simon can bring that mathematical worldview, that mathematical certainty, to what I work with. The reason behind this remarkable marriage between history and science is the analysis of the largest single body of digital text ever collated about ordinary people. It's the Proceedings of London's Old Bailey, the Central Criminal Court of England and Wales, which hosted close to 200,000 trials between 1674 and 1913. There are 127 million words of everyday speech um, in the mouths of well, orphans and women and servants and ne'er-do-wells, of criminals, certainly, but also people from every rank and station in society. And that made them unique. What's exciting about the O'Bailey and the size of the data set, the length, the magnitude of it, is that not only can we detect a signal, but we're able to look at that signal's emergence over time. Shannon's mathematics can be used to capture the amount of information in every single word. And like the alphabet, the less you expect a word, the more bits of information it carries. Imagine that you walk into a courtroom uh, at the time and you hear a single word. The question we ask is how much information does that word carry about the nature of the crime being tried? You hear the word the. It's common across all trials and so it gives you no bits of information. Most words you hear are poor signals of what's going on. But then you hear purse. It conveys real information. Then comes coin, grab and struck. The more rare a word, the more bits of information it carries, the stronger the signal becomes. One of the clearest signals that we see in the Old Bailey, one of the clearest processes that comes out, is something that uh, is known as the civilizing process. It's an increasing sensitivity to and attention to the uh, distinction between violence and nonviolent crime. If, for example, um, somebody hit you and stole your handkerchief, in the 18th century context, in 1780, you would concentrate on the handkerchief, more worried about a few pence worth of, worth of dirty linen than the fact that somebody just broke your nose or cracked a rib. The fact that 100 years later, by 1880, every concern, every focus, both in terms of the words used in court, but also in terms of what people were brought to court for, focused on that broken nose and that cracked rib, speaks to a fundamental change in how we think about the world and how we think about how social relations work. Look at the strongest word signals for violent crime across the period. In the 18th century, the age of the highwaymen, words relating to property theft dominate. But by the 20th century, it's physical violence itself and the impact on the victim that carry the most weight. That notion that one can trace change over time by looking at language and how it's used, who deploys it, in what context, that I think gives this kind of work its real power. There are billions of words. There's all of Google Books. There is every printed newspaper. There is um, every speech made in Parliament, every sermon given at most churches. All of it is suddenly data and capable of being analyzed. 